Hello, EveryDF, and welcome to our draft analysis for the HBL MD Season 2. The HBL MD, of course, being the High Dragons Battle League Metronome Division Season 2. Uh, this is a not new metronome league, um, obviously, because it's Season 2. Um, it is one coached by our very good friend, High Dragon, who we have played a lot. We've played them three out of the four seasons of the NDBL and in um, MDBL Season 2, and this is their league. This is their metronome division of the league. They actually have three divisions in this league. They also have a VGC and a ZU division. I'm not part of either of those because I am very stressed with other stuff. Um, but we're part of the metronome division, and it's going to be fun. We also have a few returning places with this. Host and Droidadoodle also in this division, so it'll be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, yeah. Also, funnily enough, actually, I've competed in this league before. Um, I competed in Season 1. I was a drop-in coach because somebody dropped out like week five, so I just battled with them week six and seven. I actually made it to playoffs um, with a team of Togekiss, Politoed, Poltegeist, but like the antique version, and Impidimp, and we made it to the first round of playoffs, the semi-finals. Um, so that was cool. We did not make a pass there, um, and I was a try attack for that, but we are an all-new team this time. We are the Toronto Tepigs. Uh, the reason I decided to change it and become the Toronto Tepigs is, um, first of all, tri attacks kind of turn into a team that I use if I'm not uploading a league, and um, this is the final team under, for now at least, under our little umbrella. Um, we have so many teams. Florida Flygons, obviously. I could, I'm not going to go through all of them because I forget one and it would just be painful. Um, but the Toronto Tepigs are the final team under our little ODF Draft League teams umbrella and they're going to be competing in this league. If you don't know what a metronome league is, basically the idea is you draft four Pokemon in this league, it is tiered. So there's tier ones, which are like good metronome Pokemon, tier twos, which are... Tier ones are amazing metronome Pokemon, tier twos are good, tier threes are okay, and tier fours are just not great. Um, you draft one of each tier, and that's and then you can only use metronome in battle. Your only item you're allowed is a Leperberry, and... That's it. You have four Pokemon, you use Metronome, and it's mostly down to luck. Um, I've competed in three leagues, both seasons of the MDBL, which is um, MLG Gaza's Metronome League, and um, the first season of this. And I've made it to playoffs every single time, but I am yet to pick up a championship, which I desperately want, and hopefully this will be the team to get us there. Um, there are ten teams in this league, making this the biggest Metronome League, I think, in the history of Metronome Leagues so far, but also um, the one, biggest one I've ever been in. Because normally I'm in Metronome Leagues of 8. Um, also, quick update on the MDBL if you're interested in that. Season 3 of that will be starting in January of next year. Because all the mods are going into exams now. And we need to focus on that. Um, sadly, we cannot play Draft League the entire time. Even though we wish we could. But um, we do get to play in this league at least. So, um, I think that's about it. I think it's time to break down our team. I don't want to make this video too long. This is just our draft recap. Um, it is an 8 week regular season. Um, top eight teams out of the ten will go to playoffs. So there'll be um, quarterfinals, semifinals, and of course finals. And I'm really, really pumped for it. It'll be a very fun season. So first of all, just going into select format, we're going to go to um, that next AG, add Pokemon. Um, time for our first one. So I had the second pick overall. The first Pokemon that went was Mew, and um, I was fine with that. I don't actually like drafting legendaries in Metronome. I just prefer drafting like Metronome is a random thing, like, any move can come of it. I just, I prefer dropping, like, base form Pokemon for that kind of stuff. With the second pick overall, I was going to stick with tier 1. Um, I had the options to, like, um, a few other people, in a, like, Jodidu especially, and, um, another person called Apartment Scroll. Um, both did a strategy where they left their tier 1 pick until really late in the draft. Because there were only 10 tier 1 Pokemon. Um, Apartment Scroll especially, um, the tier 1 was like one of their last picks. Um, I think it was their last pick overall, it might have been their second to last. Um, the reason was there were no other tier 1s left, and every team had already drafted a tier 1, so there was no point in them drafting it. But anyway, um, our first pick. Um, out of the tier 1s, there were a lot of very good regular Pokemon. I didn't want to go into any legendaries like Lake Trio, um, Mew, Jirachi, Celebi, Azelf, that kind of stuff. Um, so really my options were Poltergeist, Snorlax, Grimstar, and Sableye. I didn't want to take Sableye because Sableye isn't best in draft and I don't think it should have been a tier 1. Um, Poltergeist I've used in the MDL and I want to use some other Pokemon. Um, 
and so my choices were Snorlax and Grimmsnarl. Um, I considered doing Snorlax for a little bit, but I'm using Snorlax in the SBC right now, and there would just be too much Snorlax for me. I love Snorlax, but I don't want to have it in every league. So, leaving the final option is Grimmsnarl. Um, Grimmsnarl named Beowulf. Um, the reason I chose Grimmsnarl mainly is they've kind of struggled. Um, in the past two leagues, they've been MDL and H. BL MD season two, um, season one, sorry. Um, Grimmsnarl's very much underperformed, and I think the Toronto Tepigs, a new team, is like a new chance for Grimmsnarl to like step forward and be their authentic self, like discover why they love Metronome battling and come through for us. And Beowulf is going to be a great team leader, and I'm really happy that we got them. Next up, um, I decided to go into tier 2. Now I think one thing that's very important to mention, while it's mostly random and any team has a chance to win, there are ways to increase your chances, and since most of the moves in Pokemon, well not most of the moves, but like a good portion of the moves in Pokemon are normal types, you want ones that can be immune to that, and um, ghost types. Um, so in tier 2, there were only two ghost types, Dusk Noir was one, but I just used them in the MDBL, and the other one was very interesting, like no one was really going to draft it, and I kind of took it Gander with it because I love I love this Pokemon. I think it's got such a great backstory and stuff. Uh, and it is a cursed body ghost type, which is so good in Metronome. Um, so they are Bayonet. Um, Bayonet, who I'm going to call loved because the Pokedex entry says that they were a toy that was abandoned and didn't get enough love. So this Bayonet is loved by the Toronto Tepics, by Beowulf and I, and the other two members of our team. Um, we do have insomnia, so we wouldn't go to sleep, but really cursed body is where it is at for this thing. Every time Lovel is hit, they have a chance to stop the other Pokemon from being able to use Metronome. And if the other Pokemon can't use Metronome, they just struggle and we do insane damage to them no matter what. Which is really great, I'm really happy we got Lovel on the team, and I'm excited for them to do a lot. So, next up was tier 4, and I decided to drop, because I had kind of a wheel pick, like I had a pick, another person had two picks because they had a wheel, and then I had another pick, and then I had to wait for a 12 Pokemon to go, um, I dropped into tier 4. Next time the draft came to me, there were only two picks left, and there were, like, tier 4 was weird, it was definitely the most unbalanced tier, because there were, like, seven really good tier 4 Pokemon, like, middle evolutions, like Machoke, Graveler, um, I think, no chance it wasn't tier 4, but, um, Munchlax, um, but anyway, I went for I should let's put Metronome on loved. Instead, I went for Mr. Mime Galarian. Um, the reason I went for Mr. Mime Galarian, or the thing, as you will know, I call my Mr. Mime Galarians from the 8 bit drafts, um, is they're very solid in this. Um, out of tier 4s, I think they are the best, like the absolute hands down best. They have really solid stats, as you can see with this, especially, especially defensive-wise, with 90, which is very good for a tier 4. Um, decent abilities with, like, vital spirits so we can't go to sleep, and um, ice body, but there's very few reasons to run that, so most people are in vital spirit. This thing is going to be hopefully really good. It is a low-tier pick, but it's going to be fine. Um, at this point, I need to make my last pick, which was a tier 3. Tier 3 had some weird Pokemon. I think Electrovire was tier 3, which is amazing. Um, I did not get that. A different team got that, and I think we do have to battle them, so that'll be tough. Um, but with these three, I had one more pick. I had my tier 3, and I didn't know what to get. I was considering Hariyama at first, because Hariyama is um, an incredibly good Pokemon. However, then I realized something about one of the other Pokemon that was available, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because it is my secret tech. It is going to come out week one and hopefully demolish everything. It is, I'm so proud that I figured this out. Our last Pokemon is... Primeape. Um, it's called Pancake. That's what I call my Primeapes. Pancake. Um... I'm not going to tell you what my secret tech for Pancake is. The offensive wise, Pancake is not great. However, offensively with 105 attack, they are incredible. And um, they're not the best defenses, but decent speed. Um, if my plans with Pancake work, this could be the end of everything for them. Like, this is like, I'm going to give it like, 
a 25% chance to pan out per match. But if it does, it'll be amazing. Um, of course, we're going to put Metronome on there. I don't know what my week one opponent for this league is, but this has been a very long team builder. Um, anyway, I love doing Metronome battles. Honestly, I kind of love doing Metronome battles a little bit.